stuff that okay. I know a lot of magicians want to see and let's start with these poker chips right here that uh, that seem ordinary and and fair what what's going on with these okay so this is a very famous um, piece of cheating apparatus it's mm -hmm. called a chip cup and what it is um, they used to be made out of metal yeah um, but this one happens to be made out of plastic in fact it was 3d printed um, this is a 3D printed This chip one cup. is 3D printed. I have some older ones that mm -hmm. are made out of metal, and I have some that were actually milled out of plastic yeah. back in the days when you had to do that. This one is 3D printed. And, and was this particular one that you're showing me actually used? This one was not. This is actually just a demo set of chips that okay. I had put together. And in fact, I painted this cup myself okay. um, because it matched the chips that I already had. Oh, they're here on the know, poker table. Exactly. Yeah, these yeah. are these are demo chips. They're not, you know, these aren't poker chips from a casino or anything like that. But they are a good quality chip. In fact, they're almost a dollar a piece. So getting a set of a thousand of these things yep. not, you know, not cheap. is not cheap. Yeah, yeah, these are not Walmart or, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, target uh, kind of poker chips. These things are pricey. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, a good set will put you back about a grand. Mm -hmm. um, and so what a chip cup is, is it's a Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. And it allows you, instead of sneaking the soldiers into the gates mm -hmm. uh, of the fortress, it allows you to sneak the soldiers out of the gates of the fortress. And by soldiers, I mean all the money in the chip tray. Yeah. So it is... Um, it's utilized with a dealer that's in on the scam, okay? So this mm -hmm. is not something you walk up to a table and you do on your own. The dealer has to be in on this, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's called a dealer agent scam. The agent is the person that walks in from outside. Mm -hmm. The dealer, of course, is the dealer. Mm -hmm. So in this particular dealer agent scam, I walk up to the table and I've got some chips mm -hmm. and I've got my chip cup, which looks exactly like a stack of $25, okay? Yeah, it's, it's five reds glued mm -hmm. together. It's what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. It's actually a Trojan horse, and mm -hmm. we can put regular chips inside it. They go right up in the bottom of it. And it's a really close tolerance, too. I mean, because... Oh, that, yeah. And, and the, other, the other interesting thing about it is that they're not square. It, it is uh, like the... the Majority of the cavity is is perfectly round, but then the top is sort of offset a little yes, bit. Yes, and that's so done that, on yeah. purpose to look like a you know if yeah. I just stick a stack of chips out there, yeah. it's not going to be perfectly up and down. But it also hides the fact that the the actual like shell of the cu chip cup itself like has to be slightly larger than the actual chip. So it's, yes. it's a visual disparity that's covered very well. Yeah, yeah. It's so uh, it's um, it's an example of. Uh, an imperfection mm -hmm. that convinces. Yes. And we understand this concept from magic. You know, yeah. what is the off by one principle? Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. the imper that's the imperfection that convinces you that this situation was was real or yeah. happened the way we say it happened. So this this is the little imperfection that mm -hmm. convinces. Um, so anyway, I bet the chip cup. It's mm -hmm. empty when I bet it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say we're playing blackjack. I put it out on the betting circle. I'm the only person at the table. Again, you're in on this. Mm -hmm. So I bet it. And you deal me a hand of blackjack. And yeah. one of two things is going to happen. If I win, great. So you pay me 25 bucks of real money. And I take that money and I put it in my pile. Mm -hmm. And we just leave the chip cup sitting out there. Mm -hmm. And we play again. So eventually, I'm going to lose a hand. Mm -hmm. And now you pick up the empty chip cup that, again, looks like a stack of five red. Yeah. And you pretend to put it in the stack of five red. Uh, red chips in your chip tray, but mm -hmm. then you actually hide it in your hand and you load $100 chips or $25 chips mm -hmm. up inside it, okay? So that's mm -hmm. when it becomes loaded with yeah. chips. So now you've got like uh, the world's most expensive nickels to dimes. So. Well, <laughs> believe it or not, there are uh, stories that the person that invented this may have been inspired by nickels to dimes. Really? That he saw it at a magic shop and said, I can do that with chips. Mm -hmm. We have no way of proving that story or disproving that story, but that is the story, that this was invented by someone <laughs> who was familiar with nickels to dimes. Uh, and that's exactly, the, yeah. uh, for those of you that aren't seeing a visual here, yeah. that's exactly what you should think of. It's a nickels yeah. to dimes type shell, yeah. except in casino chips. Uh, so now it's sitting in your chip tray and it's loaded up with $400 inside. Mm -hmm. How do I get it back? Well, there's two ways. I can just continue to play the game until I win a hand, mm -hmm. in which case you will pay me with the chip cup that's now loaded up. Mm -hmm. Or if I need it back faster, I can just ask for change. So I tossed 25 bucks out on the layout and I said, Neither, give me some change, give, mm -hmm. me, uh, give me some red. Mm -hmm. And you reach in, you hand me the chip cup right back, mm -hmm. but it's not just 
my chip cup, it's got $400 now hidden inside it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do this over and over again, this little choreography of bet the cup, mm -hmm. take the money when it wins, load it up when it loses, and give it mm -hmm. right back to me either by uh, naturally me winning a hand or by me requesting it back uh, via change. Now, but you were telling me earlier that the, the one problem with this game is that you frequently look like the guy who's like asking for change all the time, which is super annoying. And there was some other interesting like methodologies where if you had another partner next to you and you both lost, you could cover the chip cup that way? Well, that helps you load it. Yeah. So if I'm betting $25 a hand you know, with these stacks of apparently red mm -hmm. chips, uh, my partner sitting to my left could actually be betting much bigger amounts of money. So mm -hmm. they might be betting uh, a stack of um, a stack of twenty five. You know, mm -hmm. they they may have a hundred dollars out there in in green chips mm -hmm. every time. And so now, whenever the dealer uh, beats us both, you know, like I stood on seventeen, you stood on sixteen, and the dealer drew out to twenty or twenty one. Mm -hmm. uh, since the dealer beat both of us, it's very natural for the dealer to collect the chips from their left to their right mm -hmm. and actually load the cup up that way. So they don't have to fake and load the, the cup up in their rack. Mm -hmm. And that might be difficult to visualize unless you have a chip tray in front of you and you yeah. get to play with this. But basically there's a couple of things you can do yeah. to facilitate the loading uh, process and to facilitate mm -hmm. giving the chip cup back to me mm -hmm. without it looking like I'm asking for change constantly. And the other interesting thing is how I think that magicians sort of have this image in their head of uh, gambling apparatuses being very finely and perfectly made. Whereas like this one, uh, while it does look great, it's it's if you get up real close, you could definitely tell that it was a that there's something off. Yeah, there's but, something off about but it. But yeah. so you were telling me like if but from I mean, I'm sitting two and a half feet away from it and it looks amazing. And so all you're having to do is fool the guy walking by or the eye in the sky, which is so far away that it can't see exactly. any of those imperfections. And you also have to understand that the time period of this device, I actually think you could use this to this day to make money. Yeah. If you were careful and you had some cheating dealer that mm -hmm. wanted to get it on with a mm -hmm. chip cup. And you went in and you used it for five minutes mm -hmm. once a week to get a couple hundred dollars and get the hell out of there. Mm -hmm. I think this device would actually still work today. Mm -hmm. But it was invented in the early 70s. In 1972, mm -hmm. the big chips cup scam hit mm -hmm. uh, Los Angeles or hit Las Vegas, was actually reported as far away as the the front page of the LA Times wow. covered it. I actually have the original newspapers mm -hmm. in the other room that talk about the $400,000 that these cheaters won. Which is no small amount of money in the, in the 70s. Yeah, 1972 yeah. money, you're talking about a million dollars today, yeah. easy. And they won it in some preposterously short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't one night or mm -hmm. anything like that, yeah. but it was uh, like within a week or so, they had just, they had stolen every chip in the place practically. Um, a, another massive chip cup scam hit a South African casino in mm -hmm. the 90s, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's actually video footage of that because wow. cameras existed by yeah. then. You know, casino cameras were around in the 90s, uh, late 80s, early 90s. I don't remember exactly when it hit. but mm -hmm. uh, So there's actually footage of the South African chip cup scam. Um, so, yeah, this is one of the few devices that I think you could actually get into a casino mm -hmm. these days. And if you were careful and yeah. only did it a couple of times a week or whatever, uh, or maybe did it once mm -hmm. all night long and then never showed your face in that uh, you know, <laughs> casino ever again, yeah. it would probably still work because you're right. It doesn't have to beat someone who's looking for it. It just has to beat that eye in the sky operator yeah. who's been sitting up there for seven and a half hours. He or she mm -hmm. is sleepy and they're just watching some people on a camera play blackjack apparently. Yeah. And then, you know, um, you know, we're not going to do this at the thousand dollar level. No. I'm not going to have a chip cup painted up to look like five thousand dollars in chips mm -hmm. because they watch those games very closely. Mm -hmm. You know, this would be at a regular blackjack table yeah. where a twenty five dollar bet's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, and there's other things that you could do. So imagine. Mm -hmm. It's fight night in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and you're at the MGM Grand, or you're at the Bellagio, or yeah. something like that, and you get a crew of people to lock up a whole table mm -hmm. all night long. Yeah, and so um, they're betting table minimum, but they're just filling up seats until the whole table's locked up, and then out comes the chip cup. They dump the rack to the whole table now because now yeah. anyone could get the cup back. Yeah. You know, so anyone that wins is going to get the cut back right away. 
and you would just absolutely yeah. dump a rack to people. And the, the guy in the eye in the sky booth, yeah. he's trying to watch 5,000 people in the building all at the same time. It's impossible. Yeah. You know, there's no way that you would pick this off unless you just noticed all the money was gone yeah. and then went back and very carefully looked at everybody mm -hmm. and really understood the choreography that you were looking for. It's a it's an amazingly simple device that is really beautiful and, and, and magicians can learn so much from everything that's going on oh, with yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, very, very cool. It's actually one of my favorite things to demonstrate to people mm -hmm. Because it, it does have that sort of James Bond gadgety cool yeah. factor thing going, um, and uh, you know people that aren't magicians at all that see this in my gambling talks sometimes yeah. they just go crazy over this because yeah. it is such I mean for such a low yeah. tech device you know it's it's twenty five cents worth of three D printed plastic mm -hmm. and some paint. And it yeah. looks great. By the way, uh, if you ever want to make a chip cup, I'll mm -hmm. give you a cool little secret. Yeah. How do you get the paint right? So that looks pretty good, as that you've already said. Actually, really, yeah, that really does good. look good. It didn't occur to me that that I don't know how do you get the paint right. You do take you? that chip right there to Home Depot, and you say, "My wife loves <laughs> these colors, and she's going to do our entire living room in these colors." Yeah. Would you use your paint software? to scan these colors and tell me exactly what shades these are and then would you mix this paint for me mm -hmm. and they'll do it they have a yeah. computer at every the, home depot and lowe's in the world that they can scan a, a single pixel from one of these colors yeah. and they can go yeah this uh, computer says if i mix these two greens together you'll get the shade you're after uh, that's all i did before i worked in magic i was working in a plastics manufacturing company and that machine's called a photospectrometer so i used to use them all the time yeah. and it just occurred to me right now as you're saying this like home depot is the best place to match colors for any yeah. This, All this is is house paint. I just painted this cup with house. I painted it myself. And that's a more valuable secret yeah. on this podcast. I, I shouldn't be putting this out for free. That's, yeah, that's an amazing go. secret. Yeah, there you go. So uh, we're running out of time here, but there is one more device on the table that you showed me that is arguably one of the coolest gambling things I've ever seen. And it's this dealing shoe right here. Okay, yep. Yeah. So, um, so I like this device because... It is similar to things that magicians may have heard of before, mm -hmm. but it, it, it does operate differently, uh, just differently enough to be, uh, it's not quite unique. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think I told you earlier there's two of these in the world. I actually know of three because mm -hmm. I forgot about the prototype. Okay. Um, so the prototype of this device is in a private collection in Texas, mm -hmm. a good friend of mine who is a magician that everyone would recognize if mm -hmm. I said his name, but yeah. I don't know if he wants people to know he owns it, so I no, won't say fair, his name. Fair enough. Um, and so what this is, is uh, it's a Baccarat shoe. And so mm -hmm. imagine a, a blackjack shoe that you would see on a blackjack table in mm -hmm. any casino in the world. Uh, but blackjack shoes usually are six deck shoes. Yeah, so it's a little shorter. And the other thing is that what we're looking at here is it's clear on th three sides. Yep. And then and then it's uh, got the traditional sort of like colored plate over the face. Yes. Yeah. So it looks just like a blackjack shoe. It's actually a little bit larger than a blackjack shoe. Uh, Baccarat shoe will hold eight decks. I don't have eight decks in here just for demonstration purposes, mm -hmm. but this will hold eight decks of cards. Most blackjack shoes top out at six decks. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are a few eight deck shoes at, uh, at blackjack. This also has a lid on it, which you usually don't see in blackjack, but is very common in the game of Baccarat. Does the lid also serve as the paddle that gets frequently used or is that uh, no, just, a, just it, an, a feature of a Baccarat? It just, just kind of looks Looks like that. It's mm -hmm. it actually the lid is on there as a protection device just to keep the edges mm -hmm. of the cards from being readable from up top. Gotcha. Uh, a couple of other things that you can do if there's not a lid on mm -hmm. a blackjack shoe. Uh, so anyway, so if I were to hand you this mm -hmm. and tell you to take it home mm -hmm. and examine it mm -hmm. and play baccarat with this. Uh, for the next 20 years, there's an excellent chance you'd never figure out what it does no. because it is not obvious at all. But some people, some magicians are probably familiar with a second dealing blackjack shoe. Yeah, it, and they usually have a prism built in just underneath the face plate of mm -hmm. the shoe. And if you slide the top card up, which you're not supposed to do when you're dealing normally, mm -hmm. but if you slide that top card up, it will fit into a little microscopic slot that's the width of just one playing card. Yeah. The, the face of the card presses against the prism and the prism will essentially reflect the value of that card 
to you so that you can see what it is. And now you have a choice. You can either deal that card if mm -hmm. it's the one you want, or you can take a chance and deal the second card out from under that. Yeah. You don't know what that second card is, but you know, you've got uh, you've got two chances here. So this is also a prism shoe. Uh, mm -hmm. However, the prism is not underneath the faceplate yeah. like those blackjack shoes. Because yeah. you showed it to me and you told me it was a prism shoe. And then I was looking in all the wrong places yeah. to, for, for it. So what's cool about this is uh, you mentioned a second ago that yeah. it's clear on three sides. Well, yeah. it also has a clear floor. Yeah. The floor of the shoe is made out of clear plexiglass. Mm -hmm. And the in, and it's about eleven or twelve inches long, mm -hmm. and the entire floor of the shoe is the prism, which is it's really wild to look at because you can see directly through it, not a problem. And then you kind of look at the edges, and you're like, oh, well, it's sort of glued together. Yeah, but it's uh, it, it's only viewable from the back. Yeah, so yeah. from the back of the shoe. Um, for you, and it's, I, I don't actually have great vision, so yeah. it's hard for me to see this. Yeah. The lighting has to be good. It's got to be bright in the room. Mm -hmm. But what these guys would do is they would get some guy or girl who had just fighter pilot vision. Oh, yeah. You know, somebody that, uh, yeah. you know, Ted Williams kind of vision. They could see the yeah. stitches turning on the baseball. They'd find somebody with unbelievable vision like that. And those people can actually sit. Now, even with my bad vision, I'm yeah. sitting, you know, I'm sitting two and a half feet away from the back of this shoe, mm -hmm. and I can look in and I see this little ghostly reflection of the index of the top card, even yeah. though the top card is three feet away from me. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool and it's hard to describe. Yeah. I'll let you try to, you know, yeah, I'll see if I can take a picture of it. Take a picture of it. Yeah. You can actually photograph this because I've seen it in photograph before. Yeah. So it, it oh, will it will come yeah. out in a photo um, pretty nicely. Yeah. Uh, but one of the crazy things about this is that the dealer doesn't have to be in on this. No. So in a in a standard two shoe, a mm -hmm. blackjack second dealing shoe, the dealer's doing everything. They're yeah. peeking the top card, they're dealing the seconds and all that. With this device, you can actually give this to a legitimate dealer who mm -hmm. doesn't know they have it and they're dealing normally uh, and yet this shoe is still able to separate mm -hmm. the top card. So that's something you probably haven't thought about yet. No. How is it breaking that top card off so that it can see it? No idea. Yeah, because if you think about just a bunch of decks of cards leaning yeah. to the side, yeah. the top card when, of the shoe is still sitting on top of the card underneath it. So yeah. how is it doing that? Because when, when you look at it, you can clearly see the index. And the other neat thing is that if you sort of shift your head from left to right, you can either see the index on the right or the left. Yeah, so there's and, a and, couple of different viewing yeah. angles. And when, because yeah. a lot of casino cards are four indexed cards. Yep. And so, how, actually, so how is it lifting that? Yeah, up? Because, I figured that one. <laughs> no, because when you look at it, it looks totally legit and normal on the side where I can see the cards mm -hmm. laying at the normal angle. And then the, the front card is, it's a little lower, but. Right. So I can show you what's going on. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll have to take a couple of cards out. We don't need all of them. Yeah. Um, so normally what happens um, is if you just take a deck of cards and you sort of lean it in a shoe, yeah. this top card is flush with the card underneath it and there's yeah. nothing that you can see. Yeah. Well, what's happening here is notice the faceplate of this shoe it's is low. bigger than it needs to be. Yeah. So what's happening is in a, in a normal two shoe, it's bigger than it needs to be because you're sliding the top card up into the peak position. It's going backwards. It's going down. Exactly. This one is that top card is sliding downwards and mm -hmm. it's actually coming off to about here. Mm -hmm. And then it's stopping by friction and gravity. Yeah. And that's where the uh, prism, the floor plate mm -hmm. is picking this. Uh, image up from right here and transmitting it all the way to the back of the shoe. Yeah. And then when this card is dealt out, the next one just sort of naturally slides down into the right position. And it doesn't work every time. If yeah. you dealt through a hundred cards here, yeah. I'd miss some of them because mm -hmm. it just wouldn't slide down into the proper yeah. position. But I would get enough of them to show a profit. Yeah. And that's all that these guys care about. It is. Of course. It is a really, really wild looking. It's it's a architecturally it's a beautiful shoe. Oh yeah, I mean just, someone's a genius. Yeah, I don't know who built this thing, uh, but somebody's yeah. a genius. Uh, I do know that the uh, so there's three of these in the world that mm -hmm. I'm aware of. There, mm -hmm. there could be a dozen for all I know, but there's three that I'm aware of. I've never heard of anybody having one other than me mm -hmm. uh, and this uh, friend of mine in Texas that yeah. has the prototype. Um, so I have the other two. Uh, yeah. There's another one in the closet. Mm -hmm. This one. Um, 
works better, mm-hmm. but it looks worse mm-hmm. uh, because what happens is yeah. these, why why does it look a little rough? It's because it was broken on purpose. <laughs> Uh, so this shoe was taken to a casino in South America. Both of them were yeah. taken to casinos in or a casino in South America. They were used. Uh, they won a couple of railroad cars worth of money to hear them tell the story. Mm-hmm. And then when they brought those shoes back into the U.S., they actually broke them on purpose mm-hmm. so that um, uh, customs or immigration or whoever they were worried about would not be able to. Uh, examine this and piece it back together and figure out what was going on. That so that was the story I was told. Uh, yeah. I actually bought this, uh, both of these shoes mm-hmm. from a guy who's still alive and mm-hmm. he is in the Nevada Black Book. Okay. And I'm talking about the real Black Book yeah. maintained by the state of Nevada, not yeah. the Griffin Book, which no. anybody could be in the Griffin Book. No, the one that the state of Nevada is like, no. you, you, you're you not allowed you on. You can't go into a casino. casino. Yes. Yeah. It, the actual name is the List of Excluded Persons. <laughs> And so the person that sold me both yeah. of these shoes, he is in the list of excluded persons. He's mm-hmm. in the real Nevada Black Book. He's still alive to this mm-hmm. day. Um, and uh, real nice guy. He's the one that told me the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I got no reason to not believe yeah, him. I, yeah, I, he, he was always super upfront with me. He yeah. sold me a bunch of stuff that he no longer had any use for. Yeah. Um, he never tried to exaggerate the abilities of any of these devices. In fact, if anything, he would often say, hey, this didn't work as well as we wanted it to. You know, yeah. so he would often downplay yeah. the success of some of these things, but it's just such a cool device. Oh yeah. Uh, so he sold it to me in parts. It wasn't together. <laughs> oh, so you, sold it you had to reassemble it. So this. I had someone reassemble it for oh, me. Man. I had someone that understands how to put these things back together. Mm-hmm. And we, um, so I guess the originally, like these little trim pieces on the side, these mm-hmm. are not original. Those were made by mm-hmm. this craftsman um, that uh, I guess they refer to them as like gingerbread or, mm-hmm. or whatever. They just, uh, they're just the little plastic trim pieces. Yeah. So these are not original. And I think the roller, uh, which is the big triangular piece that yeah, rolled, it's a that goes slightly behind. different color red yeah, than some of the is, other pieces. It is not original. So what yeah. was remaining, uh, and I don't remember if the lid was original or not. But yeah. anyway, uh, the faceplate was real. Uh, the walls, the floor, the mm-hmm. back, that's all original. Obviously, the prism is original. Um, uh, the base plate prism is original. Mm-hmm. And it had to be glued back together. And unfortunately, um, when you when you glue these things initially, they glue nice and clear. Yeah. But once you snap them apart again, yeah. you can never get that it, that clarity back. It alters the crystal and structure and exactly. the polycarbonate that's made out of. Exactly. So it looks like it's glued together. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm sure it didn't look like that when they yeah. were using it. But it does look like it's been glued together. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay. Because yeah. like I said, I'm not planning on putting it into action. No. It's just a pretty demo piece for me. And it is a very, very cool device. Yeah, really cool. So this yeah. one uh, works the best. The mm-hmm. one in my closet actually looks better, but mm-hmm. the prism doesn't function as well. It's much harder to read. Mm-hmm. Although it does work. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's one of the cool, uh, gaff shoes. I think I've got 10 different gaff shoes yeah. in my collection and this is one of the most oh, yeah. interesting. I've ones. never heard of anything like this before. So, really neat. Well, Jason, thanks so much for having us into the, your gambling museum and thanks for sharing yeah, these no with problem. us on the podcast. And, uh, I hope there's so much cool stuff in here. Hopefully the next time Penguin comes to Vegas, we can come back and do this again. Yeah. Yeah. It would be fun to do the, the next, uh, I don't know how <laughs> many we did here, five or six items. Oh yeah. It'd be fun to do the next five. And oh. you know, I've got, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of things in here that appeal mm-hmm. to magicians because of the cool oh, yeah. factor. And I've got stuff in here that would only appeal to gamblers because yeah. the gambler only cares if it works. They don't yeah. care how neat it is. Yeah. You know, so yeah. You showed me a, a cool collection. You showed me a broken piece of something that was only gamblers would like, but yeah, man, it's millions is it cool. of dollars. Yeah. It's a broken piece of something that yeah. has won millions yeah. of dollars. Uh, uh, but yeah, that's the stuff yeah. that magicians go, yeah, whatever. I know about that. What yeah. they don't know about is uh, like, that's what the real cheaters would yeah. go. Yep. That's the thing. Give me yeah. one of those, you know? <laughs>